So we will be presenting Jean and Louise Antigone. We will be focusing on the question, to what extent is authority implicitly and explicitly explored within the text? So Henri explores the concept of authority through the characters, particularly Antigone and Creon. This is done implicitly and explicitly. Uh, we will be discussing how he does this and specific examples. So, what is the difference between explicit and implicit? Explicit refers to being clearly expressed or demonstrated. So, so the characters, actions, or words are clearly defined. Whereas implicit is when thoughts are implied rather than explicitly stated. These meanings are hidden within the text and are less obvious or subtle. Anui portrays both explicit and implicit authority through his characters according to what they say and do. We will first begin with an example showing explicit authority. Creon, the king has decreed that Eteocles, the virtuous brother, will be given an elaborate funeral, while Polynices, the good-for-nothing, the rebel, will be left unburied and unwept, prey to ravens and jackals. This passage shows Creon asserting his power as king. He lowers Polynices' level to a good-for-nothing, the rebel, and alters reality by feeding the public false descriptions of the two brothers. All citizens must follow the laws he makes and therefore showing his absolute authority over the people of Thebes. The diction used reinforces Creon's power and authority. The creed emphasizes his power, showing that all of Thebes have heard and will obey his words. Reminding the audience that he is the king emphasizes his high status. Dubbing Polynesis as a rebel highlights Polynesis' supposed villainy. The phrase unburied and unwept, pray to ravens and jackals, give a harsh imagery of Polynesia's piteous state. The ravens and jackals are also strong symbols of death. One example of implicit authority is seen in page 41 with Creon. He buries his head in his hands. He realizes he is at the end of his tether. Listen to me for the last time. I'm cast as a villain and I'm going to have to put you to death. What we see here is Creon speaking to Antigone and basically stating that he is at the end of his wits. He is surrendering to Antigone and his loss of authority is shown through his words. Uh, he acts as if he's being forced to take, make a decision uh, and Antigone it seems to be the one that's gaining power although she's not saying any words. Uh, we see that words like villain and have to put you to death uh, weaken uh, Creon as a character. Next, we will be looking at another example of implicit authority. But before I do, I want you to be sure of your role. Do you know why you're going to die, Antigone? Do you realize what a squalid story it is you're going to put your poor little bloodstained name to forever? This passage implicitly shows Creon's authority. Although, as mentioned in the previous passage, Creon is showing Antigone his side of weakness, he is actually thinking ahead of her strategizing a way of persuading her of stopping her foolishness. His power and authority is shown by the success of his plan, as Antigone becomes lost in her opinions and begins doubting herself. This passage foreshadows Antigone's death, as Creon asks, Do you know why you're going to die, Antigone? Here, Creon implies a declaration of execution, showing his authority over life and death. Creon's authority and power is further emphasized when he describes Antigone's wishes as squalid story that does not deserve her poor little blood-stained name. This shows Antigone's course of actions as futile and hopeless. It shows that her efforts were in vain. So this passage shows both implicit and explicit authority. Poor Creon. And I, with my broken nails and the bruises your guards have made on my arms, and my stomach all knotted up with fear, I'm a queen. Uh, the first sentence Antigone says, poor Creon, um, demonstrates Antigone's power, but it does so implicitly. Uh, by pitying Creon, she has lured him, and in doing so, elevated herself. And Antigone, with her broken nails and the bruises, and her stomach all knotted up with fear, these are all physical demonstrations all physical assertions of the guard's power and their authority over Antigone. But Antigone ends off saying, I'm a queen. And in doing so, she states expressively um, that she does have power. She has the power to say no to Creon, and she has the power to accept her fate.
This picture is from an Antony play at Theater Studio in China. In this picture, we see a conflict of power. On the foreground, we see a woman, presumably Antigone, sitting behind or in front of, depending on how you view it, a large intimidating figure. We assume as Creon. Creon is a large figure that takes up almost a third of the picture, symbolizing that he has the power. He is an authoritative figure that is in control. His word is law, and transgressors are threatened by the punishment of death. The low subjects that stand in front of Creon are lightly faded out and are distant from the viewer, showing that they have less authority. Their stature is smaller than Creon, but they appear taller than Antigone as, as they explicitly hold power over her. For example, the guards arrest Antigone and prevent her physically from bearing Polynesis. Antigone's figure expresses authority, however does it does so implicitly. She is brilliant and seems to be the focal point of the lighting, however is covered by Creon. Her authoritative power is not explicitly shown in the play, however the audience is able to pick up through the text her power through her words. Example, when she says no to Creon. Antigone, Antigone's authority is hidden from the rest of the people in Thebes, and the only ones that witness her power is Creon and the reader. Overall, this picture symbolizes that Creon and the guards represent explicit authority, whereas Antigone regains power implicitly. We will now look at a piece of music that can represent views of explicit and implicit authority in Antigone. The song is Viking Death March by Billy Talent. Now, the time is now, we can still turn it around, raise your voice like a weapon till they fall. So Tom, open your eyes and the empire falls! Uh, this song is about Antigone fighting authority and Thebes. Um, so Creon in the, is in a position to preach to Antigone about love, faith and trust in order to convince her to live. Antigone, however, refuses to believe him. This song represents her response. So the chorus can be seen as there being conflict within Thebes, as the crosses still burn, axes still fall, even after Antigone's brothers have fought and died. This is similar to how the chorus does speak about the conflict within Thebes impartially. Antigone becomes a source of conflict against Creon's authority. Creon, as an authoritative figure, is brought down when he attempts to compromise with Antigone. He just don't look so tall. Antigone resolves herself to fight against Creon's decree, telling herself the time is now to fight tooth and nail without a shadow of doubt. Now, uh, this specific verse, cracking the whip on the backs of the poor, we asked you to stop but you still wanted more. The blood on your hands left a trail as you crawl, down on your knees you just don't look so tall. This fo verse focuses on the guards as explicit authoritative figures. They take advantage of the weak, even relish in it. The guards arrested Antigone without a care, only wondering whether they would get a raise and how to spend their money. There is no consciousness in them. Their actions do leave shame on their hands, but they don't care. Even when Jonas approached Creon when the bury body was first buried, he sh shamelessly sought to save himself and seemed to small characters. The guards were proud when they were standing with Antigone in custody, on the other hand. 
Evidently, explicit and implicit authority is greatly explored in Antigone.